Unity of Houston is an inclusive church where we seek to understand and live the teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. At Unity, we welcome all people from all spiritual paths and every walk of life. We celebrate the diversity of our city and of our world, and we teach love, tolerance, and oneness, seeking to live in harmony with open minds and open hearts. Wherever you are in your spiritual path, you are always welcome at Unity. Join us and discover that the life of your dreams is already within you. Turn to someone and say, don't be so hard on yourself. Do it. Come on. Let them know. Don't, don't, don't be so hard on yourself. What's the thing Howard used to always say? Life is meant to be good. Amen. I love that song. Jess Glenn's. Uh, there's, I don't know what happened in England like 30 years ago, but all of these like little lily white English girls are great soul singers. If you don't know that, the, the woman who recorded that song, it's really strange but beautiful. Adele, these, there's some, something happening over there. But anyway, you all know that I have really been enjoying the, the social media for my joke material lately. I don't spend a lot of time on, on social media, but it's, it's pretty interesting what you'll find there. You can find everything there. Whatever, whatever it is you're, you're into, it's there. Whatever you're against, it's there. So just, just know that. This is from Twitter. Mike Mitchell, I don't know who he is, but he said this. If you want to know how the week is going, I just took a pillowcase out of the dryer, put it over my head, thinking it was a t-shirt to wear to bed, spent 15 seconds inside it searching for the neck hole, and then mumbled, what is this, pants? <laughs> Thank you, Mike Mitchell. I love that. that it's got, I get the image of that, and I'm not going to ask for a show of hands on who has done that, but uh, you've done it, at least metaphorically. We've all done that. We're in something that doesn't fit. It isn't working right, but we keep working it. What's the definition of insanity that we learn from the 12-step world? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Keep trying. It's not working, but I'm going to keep doing this. We've all done that. And as we complete this three-week prosperity series, I chose for the title today, Moving Purposefully in the Flow of Life. That there, there is a way that life wants to be lived in, through, and as you, and it's not with your head in a pillowcase. And yet, many of us, we, we've been in that pillowcase, in a relationship, in a job, in the way we're treated, the patterns, the way we treat our bodies and our health. It's not working. We're moving against the current of life energy that wants to support us, but it's a pattern. It's a habit of thought. Yesterday morning, I, I am an early, early riser. I have turned into my father. Nine o'clock, I'm out. Five o'clock, I'm up. You know, that's just the way that my life works now. And, uh, and I, it's surprising, because that's not who I used to be, that that was my dad. And Yesterday morning, though, it was cold. And I had a couple of really long work days on Thursday and Friday. And so normally, when I wake up at 4.35, I'm throwing, but it was like, woke up, and I just stayed in that bed for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Felt really good. Just, uh, huh, I, I think I was in bed for about an hour and a half before I got up. And I thought, even though that was a nice, comfortable thing, it's another metaphor that sometimes we stay in these uncomfortable, well, in these unproductive habits and patterns in our life because we know it. It is comfortable in a way. It may not be getting us where we're going to go because really I needed to get out of bed if I was going to do what I needed to do. And I did. But sometimes we stay in what is familiar in terms of our pattern of thinking and action. And so today what I hope to impart you with is a sense of possibility and permission to get out of the old habits and to move into the place of your dreams and freedom with a trust that there is a current of life beneath you. The pure potentiality that is God, that is spirit, the no form, no name, beyond all um, conception, that infinite pure potentiality wants to become something. The being of God wants to become. And so the ancients said it this way, that God moved over, this, over the, the void and said, let there be light. And that energy of the no thing becoming a thing, light. 
And that is the metaphysics of what is happening in our lives all the time, that there is something within us that is always saying, let there be growth, healing, releasing old ideas and stepping into the freedom that you've always wanted. That wants to happen, and it's within you every breath, every minute. It's just right there. And there is a, a pattern of it's becoming. You know, two of our values here, we have being, becoming, and belonging. Being is that we are identified with that pure potentiality, that infinite presence of God. And we're also identified with the becoming. We want to heal. We want to grow. We want to evolve. We want to become more of who we truly are. One of our favorite teachers in the unity movement, Eric Butterworth, this is in Discover the Power Within You. This is the way he says it. The whole universe is on your side. Life is forever biased on the side of healing, on the side of overcoming, on the side of success. When you get yourself centered in the universal flow, you become synchronized with this divine bias for good. Amazing things can and will unfold. How do we get ourselves centered in this universal flow? Well, in the next 18 minutes, I'm going to give you everything you need to know about it. <laughs> or not. I'm going to do what we do in the 12 steps, is I'm going to share my experience, strength, and hope around this. First thing I want to say is you have to stop resisting. Get out of the pillowcase. If you think about, and I'm going to use this metaphor of the current of water, like an ocean current or a river, in all metaphor, just know that it's not the, really the thing. The map is not the territory, but the map is useful, right? Like if the map tells you that there's a river up ahead you're going to cross, it's good to have that information before you get to the actual river. But what you see on the map is not quite what you see when you're there in real life. And so what I'm going to offer today, using this metaphor of the current, is just some information that will help you on your own personal and unique journey of overcoming, of getting into this universal flow that Butterworth talked about. So if you imagine that we are in the river of life, the great river of life, that there is, and the way I like to imagine it is like it's moving in all directions, but there is a particular current that is a fit for my soul. And if I can begin to feel my way through this great river of life, I find the place, oh, this feels good. And so it will lead me to the right people, the right places, the right opportunities for my healing and growth, the right teaching, the right church. And I will begin to feel more and more in alignment with who I am, with what wants to happen through and for and as me. And the more I trust that current, because sometimes it may lead me in places that I didn't see on my little map that I had. But if I trust it, I will be led to what is right for me. How many of you have tried to paddle in a kayak or a canoe upstream in a rapidly moving river? A few of you have. That's hard work. And sometimes the current is so strong you cannot make any headway. And this is a, a misunderstanding of our teaching. We teach that through the power of, uh, of affirmative thinking and prayer, through this using positive thoughts and patterns in our, in our belief system that we can create, manifest the world of our dreams. And this is true. But we get this idea that I can just make it happen with my will, with just, uh, I'm going to just get down on it, make it happen. I'm just going to force the law of good to be good in my life. You ever tried it that way? That's why some people feel like this stuff is just not working for me because they haven't discovered the concept of universal flow. But if instead of trying to push the river the way you think it ought to go, turn the canoe around and see where it wants to take you. Stop resisting is the first instruction I would give you today if you want to discover universal flow. If you want to discover the creative genius within you, that supportive energy of life and creativity, Stop resisting. Michael Beckwith says, there are four kinds of pain in this world. Resistance, 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 and resistance. That if we can get out of that, we might find that we can get into something that is really where we need to be. 
But I don't want you to think that we don't need our will and our, our drive. Sometimes we do. But instead of going against the river, maybe we can just begin to move across the current sometimes. You know, if you're, if you're caught in a riptide, you're swimming in the ocean, what are the instructions? Don't swim directly back to shore. Do you know this? Because the current is too strong, it will just sweep you further out to sea. But swim across it, and then you will, you'll come to the edge of that current, and then you'll be in still water again, and then you can rest, and then you can swim to shore. Just another mer- metaphor. I don't know what that really had to do with anything, but anyway. So... If we stop resisting, then we begin to work with the energies of life universally um, acclaimed and written about in all faith traditions. We're going to go back to Taoism, the ancient Chinese wisdom teaching. We talked about that there are two energies, the, the, the yin and the yang. Yin and yang, you may have heard it said. These are representations of the divine masculine energy and the divine feminine energy. They are both really useful for us in working with flow. Karen Russo, Reverend Karen Russo is a dear friend of mine. She's spoken here. She's taught workshops here. Her book is called The Money Keys, and it's living your life on spiritual principle. And she talks about using these two energies of universal creative energy in a really coherent way. She talks about creating a Money Monday and a Faithful Friday. Money Monday is the masculine energy where you make all the decisions, you check your balances, you do all of that work, you pay your bills, and then in Faithful Friday is the feminine energy of gratitude and awareness of all the blessings in your life. And Karen, the way she uses it, the masculine energy is about these three things, intention, choice, and action. The feminine energy is around these three things, awareness, gratitude, and the ability to experience satisfaction. I have been friends with Karen. I read her book. I'd heard her speak a dozen times, and I'd never heard that phrase before until she spoke at Big Sky Retreat maybe four or five years ago. The ability to experience satisfaction. I know I'd asked her about it. She always uses that in her teaching, but my awareness was not at the same wavelength. I hadn't heard it. But that year at the retreat, I heard this ability to experience satisfaction. This is the the quality, the divine feminine non-resistance, allowing things to be good right where they are. When I did my first uh, fifth step in the 12 steps, which is uh, personal inventory work, when I share all my deepest, darkest secrets with my sponsor, and their job is to point out my character defects. My sponsor, she said to me, Michael, I can already tell one of your biggest character defects is that you are a perfectionist. And I said, that cannot be, Judy, because I have never done anything perfectly in my entire life. To which she just looked at me and she did this. (laughs) That's it. I could never experience the quality of satisfaction because I I was always, I could look at everything that I had done wrong. I could look at all the things that were not the picture book that I had in my mind the way I thought it should be. It was never perfect, so it was never good enough. And what I have learned in working with these energies in the flow of life is that if I can move into this deep awareness to God within me, moving me, directing me, supporting me, then I can experience satisfaction even with dirty dishes in the sink. Can you believe that? (laughs) I can experience satisfaction with my bank account being empty. I can experience satisfaction with somebody angry at me. That's a big one for me. This job has helped me a lot with that one. (laughs) It's not about things being perfect. It's about recognizing that God is in and under and beneath all of it. And the the, the other thing about a flow and current, you're not going to stay in one place, ever. It's going to always continue to shift. Some old patterns will be dropped away. Some new things will come into your experience. And when we have directed our attention and our focus on divine good, the ability to experience satisfaction, everything works together for the good of them that are, love God and are called according to his purpose. It all works for us, not at us, not to us. So I want to stay a little bit with this idea of the divine feminine for a moment. 
we have a mind, right? And you think you're driving down the freeway, sometimes like, where is theirs, right? But you know, we do, we have a mind, and there are, I just, I wanna divide it just for a moment, that we have a rational, logical mind which gets all of its information from the senses, and it's really a useful tool. There's a, someone had said that the rational mind is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. It's not enough to get us through life. The rational mind cannot direct us through the flow because it's not seeing enough of a picture. The rational mind will try and control, will try and, uh, uh, well, I can't make a decision until I have all the information. It will get us stuck or it will have us act in ways that are not really for our good. What we need is the wisdom mind. What we need is the intuitive mind. I'm gonna share with you, uh, there's a, a passage, one, one verse from the book of Proverbs that I wanted to share. And then I thought, well, you know, the, do you know the book of Proverbs at all? It's just these little collections of wisdom sayings from the ancient Hebrew writings, and they're beautiful. And some of them are, you find them in other cultures and expressed slightly differently. But I thought, well, just the, reading that one verse isn't quite a bit enough. So I went through the chapter 14 of Proverbs and I just selected a few of these. And what I'd like to do, I could give a sermon on each one of them. I'm not going to. But I want you just to open your mind to the wisdom mind and just allow these ancient truth teachings to just rest in your awareness. And then when we get to verse 12, I will teach a little bit on that one. The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish woman tears hers down. A fool's mouth lashes out with pride, but the lips of the wise protect them. Stay away from a fool, for you will not find knowledge on their lips. The wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways, but the folly of fools is deception. Fools mock at making amends for wrongdoing, but goodwill is found among the upright. Each heart knows its own bitterness, and no one else can share its joy. And finally, verse 12. There is a way that appears right, but in the end, it leads to death. In the King James, it says, there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but it leads to destruction. And I just want to focus on that bit. Isn't, aren't those teachings just, you can feel it. There's resonance there in the, the ancient wisdom that was probably oral tradition. People would say, well, you know, my great-grandma used to say, fool's lips, whatever that one was, you know, but the, the, the writings contain this deep wisdom that applies to us today, that there is a way that seems right, given the information that I have and knowing what I want to do, I, I think that this is the way I'm supposed to go. But it's not the right way because it's not taking into account the wisdom of divine universal flow. It's not coming into an awareness of intuitive mind. And so let's talk for a moment about well, we're not going to talk. I'm going to talk. You're going to listen, hopefully, about the intuitive mind. Have you ever just known something without knowing how you know it? And it turns out you were absolutely right. Do you know the way I usually find out that I'm absolutely right? Because I don't listen to that intuitive voice. And I go and do the thing that seems right to me that didn't work out. The longer I've been in this teaching, the longer I've been in recovery work, the longer I have just tried to direct my life into the flow of God, the more I've come to hear that little voice, it's usually not the first voice that speaks in my mind, but just that little nudge that says, go this way, call this person, pick up that book. And I don't know how it works. I don't know how that information is coming to me. I don't know if it's through some strange, you know, fourth dimensional thing. I don't know if it's just my unconscious is picking up on things that I'm not aware. I don't know. I don't question it. And when I'm allowing my rational mind to give me all the inf information it has, but then step aside and listen for this deeper knowing, I've always been led into a beautiful 
possible, creative way of being. This is from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, page 86 and 87, I think. In thinking about our day, we may face indecision. We may not be able to determine which cor- to determine which course to take. Here, we ask God for inspiration, an intuitive thought or a decision. We relax, we take it easy, we don't struggle. And we're often surprised at how the right answers come after we've tried this for a while. What used to be the hunch or the occasional inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind. That's intuition. And that's a beautiful, practical way of taking it up. In the morning, I hope that you are doing some kind of a meditation, a prayer time, some kind of a devotional time. I'm not here to judge how long you take or what it is to you, but I'm, it's a good thing to do in the morning. It's just to, before your day, get quiet, spend time with God, listen. And then when we face indecision, to ask for help. Give me an intuitive thought, and we'll be surprised at how often that thought will come and we will follow it to our good. To purposely move with the flow of life, we must learn to feel it. It's not just about seeing it. The rational mind can only take us so far. We need the deeper knowing of our intuition. And so finally, I want to talk about the way we move, flowing and rowing, back to the canoe on the river. It's not an either or. It's a both and. You might think about that divine feminine energy is letting the current take us, and then the divine masculine energy is, I'm going to get my paddle in the, in the river and start working a little bit. It's not either or. We need both. Just like we take left step, right step to move in the world. It's a beautiful way that we've been given these two companion energies that help us navigate life. So I want to finish with talking about this idea of using the divine masculine. And if you're interested in going deeper into this part of the work, I really encourage you to sign up for Prosperity Plus 3. Starting today, seven weeks, starts at 1.30. It's going to be online until um, the Omicron kind of settles down a little bit, and you'll have an option. You can be online, or you can come meet with us in person. Shirley and I are super excited to teach this class. You're going to be learning tools and techniques for how to visualize, how to intend how to create energy in the positive way that you're looking for. So let's take Reverend Karen Russo's idea of the three aspects of masculine energy. Intention. What do you want? It's a great question that we don't ask often enough. Where do I want to be? Debbie, your, your testimony was so powerful when you said that you, who you're becoming is so different than who you were. And I'm guessing there was some intention involved around that. This just didn't, didn't, she didn't just show up looking that fabulous on accident. Come on. <laughs> that takes some intentionality. She was intended, intentive about it. Intentional is the word I was looking for. The second part is to then choose. And let me tell you about choosing. Choosing for something means choosing not something. And you've got to get okay with that. You can't have everything you want. You can have anything you want. But you must choose. Do you get it? I remember the first time I heard that part of the teaching. I said, we don't teach that you can get everything you want in new thought. That you can have anything. If you can't be both Miss America and a nuclear physicist, most likely. I mean, maybe that will happen. And most of us probably not going to be Miss America. But you know what? That's not in my current of the river. I don't want to be that. If I get clear on what I want and start choosing for that. You won't choose perfectly. You'll choose some things that are like, oh, that was not it, and that also is good information. So we intend, make an intention about it, we choose, and then lastly, we take action. We do something. As I just said, it may not be the, always the right something, but if we're taking it from intention and with our choice, it will begin to show us the perfect current of the river. I wanted to end today by talking about my history of tithing. You got really quiet in here all of a sudden. (laughs) Because tithing is a beautiful spiritual practice to get us in the flow of life. That's really what it's for. Now, it also helps us keep the lights on here at Unity, and there's no, I'm not going to be dishonest about that. It's the way we do it. That people who 
feel blessed and inspired. They give to the source of their spiritual food, and that's how we're able to do the work that we've... And it's always been that way for 102 years. That's how we do it here. And there's, we don't have any shame in our game around it. You are invited to give generously into this ministry, and I will tell you, this is good soil. So many lives. Thank you, Debbie, for being my exhibit A today, of lives that are being transformed. Well, I knew all of that when I was in this movement 25, 30 years ago, but I was, I was a mess, y'all. And so when I was in a New Thought church in Dallas, and they were teaching on tithing, and I just got, ugh, just got all puckered up. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't think I can do that. But I was curious, because I, I saw that the people who believed in these principles and were practicing, their lives looked a little bit different than mine. So I took the class, and I made a decision. Now, when I first started tithing, I was making about $300 a week as a a saloon singer and occasionally picking up a shift at Bennigan's in the Galleria. And that barely covered my drinking. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> my rent at the time, I shared a, a duplex with two roommates. The rent was $1,000 a month. So my rent was $333 and a third cent every month. Sometimes I would give that extra penny just to feel like a big shot. <laughs> and sometimes, most months, I couldn't make that rent very easily. It was hard. And that's where I started in this teaching. Where their money was scarce, life was hard, I didn't know how I was going to do it. Didn't believe in myself. I knew that I wanted something more than this. I wasn't exactly sure how to get there. Especially, especially with money, but I began to practice it. I tried it. Well, and a really fortunate thing happened is that in that process, I did finally um, get sobered up in AA, and I started doing that work as well. Got a place on my own. It was a smaller duplex, $600 a month. And I, I remember in that time, as I was practicing both of these spiritual teachings of AA and of New Thought, and I just made the decision that whatever income comes in, I'm going to count it every week, and whatever, 10%, I'm just going to give to my church. About the time, it was $300 a week, usually. And then I remember, as I began to take action be creative on how I could generate more income, it started to increase. And I remember one week, gosh, I remember it so distinctly. At the end of the week, I had made $1,000. I never thought I would make $1,000 in a week. I almost fell off the piano bench in my living room when I counted it up. I had started doing some vocal coaching and a few piano lessons, getting a few more gigs. I played at nursing homes, retirement homes. And then I did my first affirmative prayer, and I went from working at Bill's Hideaway to working at the mansion on Turtle Creek, from the diviest of the dives to the swankiest place in town. And I started going, do, do people know this stuff works? This is pretty cool. <laughs> Within two years, I had tripled my income. Not from, well, yeah, more than that. I was, by the end of my time in Dallas, I, was, I had a six-figure income, multiple streams of income, doing you know, all kinds of things practicing these principles. When I made that $1,000 week, I remember writing that check. <laughs> $100 and change. And you know what I noticed? It didn't feel bad. It felt good. Look what good has come into my life. I've joked, too, the first time I wrote a tithe check with a comma in it. That was great. So, here's the thing. If this conversation is making you feel uncomfortable, it's probably not the time to start this practice. You might do the, um, the Muslim tithe, which is 2%. Start there. Just find some way to get yourself into the flow. If this is the issue, if monetary flow is the issue and you're not currently tithing, it will, it will move things for you. But if you're curious about it and maybe a little scared, it might be time. It might be time to take that commitment. I share that story not because the church is trying to get your money, because it was kind of a taboo topic for me in my spiritual growth. I felt embarrassed about my money, and I'm not anymore. I've learned how to just be honest about it and to practice that area, too, based on spiritual principles. So as we complete this three-week series on prosperity, you haven't learned any magic words that are going to make all the money just suddenly appear in your bank account. 
what Jean Marie and I have tried to do is share spiritual principles that we have taken up in our lives and practiced, and we've seen miracles. Because that is what you were invited to for you. I invite you to pray with me now. As we open to that sense of the possible and the present, trusting that what wants to happen through us and for us in our lives is exactly the thing that will lead us to a sense of freedom and fulfillment. And so what I know for myself and for everyone within the sound of my voice that the life of God is here, active, available, moving like a great river beneath our feet, lifting us and carrying us into greater and greater freedom, greater and greater awareness and healing, greater abundance and prosperity, greater joy and connection. And so we let go of the shore, we stop resisting, we let go of old, limited ideas of who we are and what God is, and we rise in this river of life as it moves through time. And we find ourselves in the place just right where all that we need comes to us easily and effortlessly. We accept the gifts of God with great gratitude and we give generously and openly, trusting that you cannot exhaust an infinite source of good. How good it is to know this, to claim this over my life, over the lives of everyone within the sound of my voice, and over the life of this community, we claim a prosperity and abundance, joy and effectiveness in teaching. We are here to offer this opportunity and this invitation to transformation. How grateful we are. We let it be. And so it is. Amen. If no one has told you today how amazing you are, oh my God, are you amazing. And if no one has told you today that they love you, I love you. Thank you for watching this message today. I'd like to invite you to join us in person here on campus at Unity of Houston for Sunday morning or Wednesday evening services. If you can't be with us here on our campus, you can still join us live on Facebook or on our website, unityhouston.org, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Central.